G'day all, I'm Graham Sanders and I live at Townsville, North Queensland. That's where Latitude 19 crosses the east coast of Australia. I'm trialling the honeypot hive system in the tropics with the local species Tetragonia hocking's eye. This episode, four weeks, or near enough to, one month after the induction had started. It's the 30th of June 2016. Temperature today? Well, we had a cold snap the last two days where the temperature dropped down to about 12 degrees. Today, overcast, maximum of 27. During the last two weeks, I would say that the temperature has been a pretty good steady around 28 degrees maximum, 18 degrees minimum. Ideal conditions for the induction, so it should have proceeded along. Okay, so we're going to look at this hive and see how it's going. Again, I haven't looked at this since the last video two weeks ago. So what are we going to see or hope to see? Well, before we get into that, let's discuss what happened the first week after the induction when I, and the second week after the induction when I had photos, or sorry, videos of the honey pot in the hive. I had a good look at the two videos after I posted the video two weeks after and there were subtle changes in the honey pot up here. The first subtle change was they had actually cleaned out most of the propolis in many of the pots. So they were definitely working the top of it. The second change that you may not have noticed, the little holes between the pots they had filled every one of those in with propolis. So they had decided that those little holes between the main pots, they fill in those holes. So they were definitely doing something up there. Now, one person suggested to me that could be a store of propolis for them for the future. Could well be, but they're definitely doing something up there. And the third thing you'll notice in that video when you compare the two, there were two blobs, one up on the top left one on the top right and I suspected those blobs is where they're going to be making the honey pots and that's where I'm hoping to see when I open this hive up that honey pots have been started to be constructed there. Now in an induction I don't believe in this business of leaving it there for six months 12 months and hope for the induction to take place. I believe that if this hive is ready and can support an induction it will do it here or in any hive I induct within a month. It should be well underway in a month. So what do, what do I normally do when the month is up? Well, I will have a look inside the hive. If there is brood, honey pot activity, pollen pot activity, means I've got the three, I've got the food, I've got the reproduction, and I've got the energy all going ahead, I start the separation process. If there's no general activity in the hive after a month, well, I make a decision then that the hive won't induct straight away, so I force induct it. And what I do there is then take some brood out of here, put it in here. I normally then would, in a hive that I'm inducting, put a one-way trap in here so that I force a number of bees, foraging bees, into this hive, build up its numbers with a one-way trap, and then after an hour, I take the whole hive off, relocate it, and let it go on its way, because the bees would already own this hive. So all I'm doing there with a bee trap is, or a one-way valve, is get extra numbers into here, build it up for an hour with the extra brood, and then take the whole lot off to a new location. It's a bit of a dilemma for me on this hive because I've promised the designer I would test it out. So what am I looking for when I open this up? Well, I'm hopeful that they've worked the honey pot, there's brood in there, and everything's going ahead, and I can start to think about a separation process. If I open this up and I can't see brood in there, I'm going to make the assumption that in the brood chamber, that scaffolding. Look at the earlier videos, part one and part two, you'll see the scaffolding, and I suspect the scaffolding may be inhibiting the induction. 
And if that's the case, I'm going into it to remove the scaffolding to see if that helps the bees along. But we shall see when we open this up. So, if it's all going well, I should see progress and I won't touch it. I'll start the separation process. I may leave it go for another couple of weeks if I can see induction going on and the brood starting to be built. Or I may have to get into it and remove the cage because I promised the designer I'd give this every opportunity. I don't know what I'm going to see, but there's only one way to find out is to open up the bugger and have a look. I better get my torch, I better get my glasses because I won't see without them. A couple of spatulas. I've never taken one of these apart before, so if I need to, I'm going to have to uh, use these spatulas and pry them apart. I don't know how they come apart actually, so that'll be interesting. All right, no point delaying it any further. There we go. So off comes the lid. Oh, well, we'll take that off there so I can grab it. Funny, didn't stick the last time, sticking this time a little bit. All right, there's the trays. We'll just remove those and shove them out of the way. Let's have a quick look now. Well, I can tell you there's more work, but less bees. And there's sort of some glistening in the bottom, which I'm, I think is condensation, which I'm not too happy about. So let's have a look at this. I'll show you a photo first. Let's grab this. get the angle of the dangle right here there we go that's it you can see it's definitely darker again and there are bees working it I can see like condensation at the top or there's a glistening now I don't know what that is but I'm going to have to investigate that I think but I will definitely now have a poke inside and I may have to remove it some bees are coming through but activities drop right off I just wonder what that glistening is it's not a healthy sign I don't think yeah that's got it right okay so bear with me again like last time, I'll have a quick look. Now with the torch, I can definitely see condensation on this. No question. Okay, I can't see into it. There's just condensation on the glass top. I just can't see into that. It's time to have a little look. It's, I normally don't open my hives during the daytime. I'm a great believer if you're going to look inside a bee, these native beehives, you do it before the sun comes up. You don't get that many flyers then. What you tend to get is they all crawl around, but hardly any fly. I'm opening this one up for A, just to see how it opens up, whether it's easy to open or not. But B, um, there's a definite drop in activity at the top, which may indicate that they've just decided to leave this because the brood's expired. Now let's see if I can get in here and open this. Well, it seems to... Well, that seems easy enough. So for you there, you can see there, you can see there they've sealed up the bottoms of the pot, so they've definitely sealed up the holes in the bottoms. So we'll put that there. Whoops. Chase that fly away. Let's see if I can see into it now. Where's that torch? Well, I'll give you good news. There's, there's a tunnel coming up, I think. But 
not into the brew chamber, just upwards a bit. All right. That requires me to go into the next step and actually have a look inside, if I can get it up. Ooh, that is tight. Ooh. That lid is really glued down, I'll tell you. Take some effort to get this off. Here she comes. Oh, isn't that glued? Okay, so we know it's glued. So, so we can definitely see that's being glued down. Mm, it's not, it seems okay. Now I can have a decent look in here. Okay, I don't know if I can get you the photo here. They're building a honey pot in here and not at the top. So let me see if I can get you that angle. That's not good. They're treating it as a storage compartment if they're building honey pots in there. Let's we'll see if you can see that. I'll take a punt, but the it's down at this angle here. You can see honey pots being made, which means is they're not treating that as a brood chamber. All right. So, what am I going to do here on that? Well, I reckon that's got to come out. And you'll see the honey pot better. Ah, first one's biting me. Thank God they're not flying around. So, I'm looking down in the bottom now to see what's there. You can see, that's the start of a honey pot, most definitely. There's, that looks like, don't tell me that's cells, that looks like cells of some sort. Let's have a look. Have we got a minute amount of brood? This could be the leftover brood. And yes, I've got a tiny amount of brood and you can see the young hatching. I would suspect this is not new brood. This is old brood. What I have got is a tunnel coming up, definitely. So they are treating it as such, but there's a little bit of brood there still, and I suspect this is the brood I put in. I'm just looking for a queen at the moment. I'm starting to be attacked now. I knew this would happen. All right. So what am I gonna do with this hive now as it stands? Well, before I get eaten to death, and now they're really deciding to have a go. We look at this. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry about that. I don't know when that fell, but you certainly heard me. But I'm being eaten, attacked and eaten, so let's deal with this. First job is we've got to get rid of some of this stuff and put it back. Propolis is very expensive for bees. It takes roughly... Oh, that... That honey pot's actually got honey in it, strangely enough, too. So what I'm going to do here is a bit tricky. I'm not putting that back. I'm suspecting that they've got the tunnel up, but they don't like this as it stands. I'm going to put this lid back on. I think it's important. It seems to keep the bees relatively happy. I'm not going to try to peel this. I'm going to let the bees deal with this by just putting this down next to the hive. They will recover all this. I've got no, no doubts about that. It's 
wash one bee, then that's probably one of the reasons they get a bit pissed off. Okay, we'll put, I'll leave that like that. We'll put this back on here. I don't know what that glistening is. Oh, that'll do them a world of good. Put it like that then. Okay. This is why I don't like disturbing the little buggers. All right, so let's summarize where we're at on this. I've taken the thing out. There's, there's still some brood there hatching, but they were making honey pots on that frame, which tells me that's not what I want. The condensation, a little bit of a worry. But we'll give it for in favour of the designer another week or two to see if they take to this or I go to the next stage. So I've got bees here I just got to get rid of now. Off me. I'll close it up. You've seen all this before. I think that's enough.